Hi, this is John Fenn, and once again, I am so pleased to bring to you now the third installment in my series about living in the balance of grace and faith. In this series, I'm going to talk about how faith is our response to grace. I just started to get into it a little bit in the last session, so this session I want to talk about a little more. If you'll recall, I've been talking about how Noah did not just decide to build a boat. He was told by the Lord. He received revelation from the Lord about building the ark. And when he responded to that revelation, that is faith. And so faith is actually our response to grace. We don't live in a bunch of structured rules where we think God wants us to do this and God wants us to do that. What he wants us to do is walk with him. And when we walk with him, he can speak to us. He can lead us. He can reveal things to us. And so faith is the response to what we receive. Faith is a response to that peace. Faith is a response to that revelation. In a word, revelation and peace or communication from the Father is grace. And again, just by summary to remember that, that God so loved the world that he gave his son is grace. That all who should believe in him will not die but have eternal life, that is faith. When we have the revelation that God so loved the world that he gave his son, we respond. And the response to that revelation, or response to that grace, that revelation of grace, is that we get saved. That we believe on the Lord Jesus. So it all flows down from that revelation that Jesus is the Christ. And we receive that grace, then we move on. Now you say, okay, John, what is, what is faith then? Um, what does faith feel like? How do, you, how do you receive this revelation? You know, you talk about this not living by a bunch of rules and regulations and try to bribe God with money or, or not trying to bribe him or manipulate him by going to church that extra time or, you know, getting involved in this fad or the, that, you know, latest teaching that thinks it's the cutting edge. The cutting edge, folks, is living with the Lord. He is in you, Christ in you, and, and that's cutting edge. That's being on the edge of what God is doing today because he's doing a tremendous work. But it's relationship-based. It's person to person. It's not in the buildings. It's not in the, in the traditional things. It's person to person because he came to save individuals. And so he's moving very powerfully in relationship-based faith. So what does faith feel like? I mean, what, how do you receive this revelation so that you can respond in faith? Um, and let's go to a verse I'll refer to. It's Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And it says here, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, in the Greek language, for the purposes of this teaching, there are two main words that we want to look at that are the word for words. One is logos, or L-O-G-O-S, or logos. And that is the Greek word meaning the general counsel of God. That is Genesis through Revelation. That is the whole of it. That is that Christ left heaven to become flesh and he became the word in the flesh. That is the logos. He, in, in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him is the revelation of the Father. Uh, and so that is the logos. That's the total sum of God's counsel. But out of the total sum of God's counsel comes a specific word to you and I, and that is the Greek word rhema, R-H-E-M-A, rhema. And so out of the logos, out of the general, comes the specific to you and I, and that's what we're looking for. It is, it is out of that specific word that faith comes. For instance, when Peter got out of the boat, it was Jesus who was there walking on the water. The logos was walking on the water. Uh, and Peter and all the disciples saw him. But out of the Logos, that is, out of Jesus, comes the invitation. Peter, come, walk on the water with me. Peter responded to the rhema to him. So out of the Logos came a specific word, a rhema, to Peter. And Peter responded to that specific word. And that is why in Romans 10, 17, which is a, a well-known verse about faith, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith comes by hearing the word of God is what Romans 10, 17 says. But that word the Apostle Paul used is not logos. He did not say faith comes by, the, uh, by receiving the general 
logos of God, the general principles of God. In other words, he didn't say, just read Genesis through Revelation or read two chapters a day and you'll have faith. That's not what this verse says. That's not what God is saying. The logos, the general counsel of God, is not going to get you saved, does not produce faith. Think of it this way. There are many people, billions, I would say, around the world who don't know who Jesus is. They know of the historical figure of Jesus, and th therefore he is the Logos. But to get saved, you have to have a rhema. You have to have a revelation that Jesus is the Christ, and then you respond to that. And what Paul says here in Romans 10, 17 is this, that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the rhema of God, not the logos. Just reading chapter and verse is not going to get you faith. He says faith comes by receiving a rhema, a specific word from God to you. That is how faith comes. And this explains many things. This explains why there are theologians. There are, there are ministers and pastors and priests and all sorts of people who have been in the church world for all their lives, all their professional lives, but they are, they're not saved. They don't know the Lord. Probably every one of us, no matter what nation you live in, no matter what uh, Christian culture you came from or you're familiar with, who can think of ministers of the gospel that you know, they don't really know the Lord. To them, this is just a profession. They know the logos. Oh, they can quote you from Genesis through Revelation, but they don't know. They've not received the personal revelation that Jesus is Lord. And that's what you and I did. I grew up in, in a church setting. I, I said the same uh, teachings, the same liturgy every single Sunday. And a girl in school, when I was about 16 years old, started talking to me that she knew the God behind the liturgy. She knew the God behind the service. And I believed in God. I believed in the logos. But when she said, I know him, that got me interested, and I started watching her life and her boyfriend's life at the same time. We were all just teenagers. And I saw answered prayer, and it started working on me. What are you gonna do about Jesus? Jesus is Lord, you need to make a decision. And that revelation started coming. And so it became a specific word, a rhema word to me. And then I responded to that revelation, I responded to that grace by saying, Jesus, I believe in you, come into my heart, take control of my life, be my Lord and I give my life to you. So you see that, that faith is a revelation or is a result of grace. Faith is the response to grace. And that grace comes from a specific word from God to us. Again, I go back to Noah. Uh, Noah knew God. In fact, Genesis chapter six says that Noah walked with God. He, he knew the Lord, but out of the logos, out of knowing the, the word, out of knowing the Lord generally came a specific word, Noah built the boat. And out of that, his faith was, came. His faith came out of that grace. So what you and I are responsible for is walking with the Lord. Uh, a, a rhema word, a specific word to us comes as we walk with him in the logos. That is, you get up in the morning and you thank him for a beautiful day. And you, you start worshiping and you pray and you maybe spend some time reading a little bit. Or maybe on the way to work, you're listening to some teaching or some worship music. And that's the general communion with him. But out of that will come a rhema. Out of that will come a specific word and direction. And it may be a leading. It may be peace. It may be a specific voice, you know, from the Lord that you will hear specifically, do this now. Um, but usually it's an inward witness. It feels right. We have peace in that. Now, I just said something there that we have peace about it. And so let me take you to, uh, for instance, Hebrews chapter four. People ask me all the time, John, what does faith feel like? You know, uh, I mean, people, people wanna know, you're talking about, um, you know, that, that faith is our response to grace. And then how do we get the grace to begin with? And I start saying, well, You've got to walk with the Lord in the Logos, and then out of the, your intimacy, out of your relationship with him as the whole counsel of the Lord, then he will speak specific things to you. And you think, okay, what does that feel like? What, you know, how, does it, how does it happen? 
And the reason that they asked that is the same reason that I tried at first. I thought I had to work it up. I thought faith was something I strive for, like, um, you know, like trying to work on, a, a, like you ever turn with a wrench, a nut that is frozen or a screw that is frozen, you're just going, and you're, you're trying to turn with all your strength. I thought that's what faith was. I thought that's how, it's like, I'm going to believe the Lord. Yes, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to believe God. And, and you start going so strong. And, and it's like, I don't see that in Noah. I don't see that in Abraham. I see them walking with God. Then a specific word comes that is a word of grace. Build a boat, Noah. And then Noah responding to that. But I see a peaceful life. I see, I see a grace and a peace upon the life of Noah. I see the grace and the peace on the life of Abraham, a grace and a peace on Moses, you know. And, and so I started realizing faith is not something I have to work up. Faith is not something that I'm striving for or, or thinking I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Um, faith is a result of grace. And so I merely respond to that. And, and sometimes people will, will bring up um, maybe Mark 11, 23 and 24, you know, whatever you pray, if you believe, you will receive. And that's a true verse. But remember, it is built upon a greater truth, which is what Jesus said in John 5, 19 and 5, 30, where Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. And as I hear, I judge. So the foundational truth is Jesus didn't do or say anything unless he saw or heard it from the father. So when Jesus then says, whatever you pray, believing you will receive, it's built upon that foundation of first seeing or hearing from the Father. It's not a standalone verse. Faith does not stand alone. It's built upon the revelation of the Father. So that's why you can't just say, I'm going to believe for a Ferrari that by the end of the year, I'm going to have a Ferrari. Our job is to get with the Father and say, Father, I need a new car. <laughs> and then, then maybe he'll give you a Ferrari. Uh, I don't think I would fit in one. I think I'm a little too big for one. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with it. But you know what? In the daily needs of my life and the different desires, that is something where I've gone to the Father saying, okay, Father, we need to do this. We need to do that. Let me give you a specific. Um, being an American, I have a pickup truck. <laughs> that may sound funny. But Ameri don't you think of Americans as having a pickup truck? Um, where we live is out in the country. And we live on a lake. Uh, just like one of the many lakes in, in beautiful Finland and this part of the world. And uh, I have a handicapped son. Our oldest son is multiply handicapped. Uh, he is in his mid-30s in age, but mentally he's only four years old. Uh, the cord was around his neck in a slipknot and it cut off air when he was born. Uh, have we asked the Lord to heal and, and have a peace about his healing? Oh, absolutely. But... In the meantime, we have to live. And we were needing, uh, we had a need of a new truck. But there are some very specific things that we needed. And so I was praying and communing and with the Father, and it seemed like he was saying, first, kind of, I would say, gather yourself. Uh, in other words, I didn't just say, okay, Lord, we need a new truck. It was, that didn't go anywhere. It went about as high as the ceiling, you know, when I thought about praying like that. Instead, it seemed like, oh, gather yourself. Commune with the Lord. Get some, get some revelation. And so I started going, okay, Father, let's see. We need four doors in the truck. We need four-wheel drive because we're in the country. We have snow and such. Um, it has to be low enough that I can lift my son out of his wheelchair, you know, into the truck. And yet it has to be four-wheel drive. Uh, different things like that, that I, that I said, okay, this is what I need. Well, we didn't have anything really to, to go to a, a car dealership to do that with. I had my old truck. That's all I had was my old truck. And the truck that I had is not worth the amount of money that I need to spend to get a truck like I requested. I'm thinking, okay, Father, how are you going to do this? And so, again, what I'm doing is I've got the general relationship with the Father and with the Lord. So that's the logos. That's the whole counsel of God. I know the Lord. Okay. So then I'm thinking, okay, I need a, need, I, I need a pickup truck. I need a new truck. Our old one is kind of wearing out, worn out. But I don't have the resources other than that truck. You know, it's the kind of point where things start going wrong with it and you need to get rid of it. And, and so 
I wasn't getting a specific word, except the only specific word was consider what kind of things you need in that truck. So out of the logos came this just knowing. I did not hear a voice. I just had a piece that I needed to, to kind of make a list of what was required for a new truck. Well, so I made that list. Like I said, four doors, four-wheel drive, uh, not so tall that I can't lift my son out of his wheelchair. And then one day, it was about mm, two months later, two months later, a friend called me up, and he said he wanted to buy my truck. But my friend lived in another part of the country that was more, I will say, prosperous. And he offered to buy my truck at his prices instead of my price. And he gave me enough for the truck that I was able to go out and buy a used truck for that exact amount that I'd just been given for my truck. In fact, where I live, my friend gave me twice the value of my existing truck. Because where he lived, the economy is much, much stronger. And so he gave me twice the value of my current truck. And with that money, I went and bought a truck that exactly fit our needs. And it's so perfect. It's so perfect. And all that happened in just the span of a week or so that I, you know, it happened all of a sudden. I gathered th that revelation. It's like that peace. Where do you want me to go? I felt a peace about all making that little list. And see, all I did was respond to that. I, I, I walk with the Lord, you know, and I talk with the Father. But instead of just name it, claim it, I'm going to do this for the Lord. I'm going to get my truck. I'm going to speak this into existence. I just went, okay, Father, so what do you think? What do you think? And it just came to me, make a list. See, that's the rhema. That's the grace. The grace is in that rhema. And so as a result of that, I responded by making that list. And then within, oh, a week or two of, of doing that, suddenly, well, it was over the, this all happened over the span of two months, but within a week of finalizing that list and really getting it inside me, saying, Father, okay, this is what I, I would want. Then my friend calls me up and gives me twice the value of my truck. And he knew. I said, you know, this is in my area of the country. You're paying twice. And he said, you know, he knew that. He knew that. And, but it was the exact amount of money. And, and what, it was funny because my son, Chris, and I were driving. And I'm going, okay, Father, my friend is, has given me the money for, you know, my truck. It's twice its value in my part of the country. I'm thinking, okay, where is your provision? Where, where have you revealed? You know, reveal your provision. Reveal it to me. Show me what you have provided for us. Because I know it's out there. You provided us this far. I looked up, and there's a pickup truck for sale sitting on the street with a for sale sign on it. And it had everything we needed. And it was just perfect. I mean, it was, it was such a blessing. Now you think, what did that feel like? Well, Hebrews 4.9 tells us what it feels like. He says this, um, in verse 3, I'll go to verse 3 first, excuse me. Hebrews 4.3 says this. We who have believed do enter into rest. Again, Hebrews 4.3. We who have believed have entered into rest. Verse 9 says, let us therefore, oh, excuse me, there remains a rest for the people of God. Therefore, he that has entered into his rest has stopped his own works, even like God rested after creation. So let us work to get into the rest. So you see, faith comes from God. Satan cannot really get your faith because faith is a result of grace. You get a revelation from, from, the, from the Father. You get a revelation of his will, the peace, the, the direction to go in. Faith is our response to that. Satan can't touch that. What he tries to attack is our hope. That is our emotions and our mind to get us to, to stop in our efforts of faith. You know, he may have tried to stop Noah from building the boat or Moses from going back to Egypt or Abraham halfway through his walk. We, you know, we don't know. We know that Satan certainly tried to stop Jesus. Um, but, but hope is of the emotions and of the minds. The point is this in verse 3. It says, we who have believed have entered into rest. And this is what faith feels like. When you have received revelation from the Father, there is a rest that goes with it. Even if it is bad news, there is rest inside. There is peace that goes with it. I mean, <laughs> can you imagine being Noah and you're walking with the Lord? And, and I mean, Noah was 600 years old, I think, when he started building the boat, you know. And he's walked with the Lord for a long, long time. And then one day, 
one day the Lord says, oh, you know, by the way, I'm going to destroy the world. And you need to build a boat to save your family and anybody else who will come along. Of course, no one did. And, and the animals. I'm gonna, I want representatives of all the animals to save them as well. Can you imagine? I mean, that is life-changing bad news because your whole house, all your possessions, all, it's all going to get wiped away. The land that you love so much, it's all going to get wiped away. So even with that bad news, there's still the peace that goes with it. And Noah responded in faith by responding to that grace, responding to that rhema word, that specific word, and, um, and built the boat. That's why that Matthew 4.4 4 is so important. It says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We are to equate the word of God coming out his mouth to us, a specific rhema, that is the word rhema used, equal to our daily food. And when you live your life with the Father, that you say, you know what, if it comes to a choice between hearing your voice or eating my meal, I would much rather hear your voice. When you equate hearing a specific word from the Father into your heart more than your food, then you, you've entered into a realm that you, you know, it's like, yes, let me just walk with you. Let me walk with you. Let me have that food uh, that is spiritual food that builds me up. You become hungry for it. And so out of the logos, out of your general walk with the Lord, you become just a ravenous appetite saying, oh, I, I live for a specific word from you. Let me experience more of your peace. Let me experience more of your, your, your grace and your, your revelation of your character. And when he gives you that word, there's peace that goes with it. He that has believed has entered into rest. And as I said in verses 9, 10, and 11, there is a rest for the people of God because when you enter into his rest, you've stopped your own works. That means, like I, I talk about a job interview, um, you know, reading in the newspaper or online or something, and you, you suddenly you see this job and it just hits your heart. You know by the spirit that job is yours. Well, once you know that job is yours, once you have that revelation, then you can stop your efforts. You don't put any, out any more inquiries, no more resumes. You don't go knock on any other doors because the Lord has spoken to you, that job is yours. So then you just respond to that rhema, you respond to that grace uh, in just, in, by going to the interview, by you know, getting dressed and, and showing up on time and doing all the things you do. And so it becomes a way of life. What I'm talking about is a way of life of walking with the Father, not with religious trappings, not like I said in the very first session with Cain, who was always trying to, you know, to manipulate God or come to God on his own terms, but as, as one who is a child of God walking with their Father. Uh, and it's a beautiful life. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have you don't have difficulties, but what it means is you're communing not just with the logos, not with the general counsel of God because you've got Christ in you, but out of that comes a rhema. And when rhema comes, when a specific word to you comes, that grace comes to you, faith is born. Faith is born. It's like, wow, I have this job. Or, you know, you're considering going to a particular school or you're praying for a, an adult child who doesn't know the Lord yet. And, and you're thinking, oh, all the mistakes I've made and how I want my, my children to walk with you. And then you start praying and suddenly the Father puts a peace in your heart that they will be saved. Now, you may not see it right now, but suddenly, boom, there's a peace in there. It's like, okay, your children are in my hands. They are protected and I will bring them to myself. And then you have that peace and you say, oh, thank you, Father. You start responding differently. You, you, you no longer work at it. You no longer fret. You no longer fear. You no longer worry for your children's salvation. You, you enter into his rest because you have received that rhema. You've received that revelation, that grace. And you've responded by giving thanks. Thank you, Father, for that peace. Thank you for that assurance that my children will make it to heaven. Thank you so much. And you enter into that rest. Let us labor to enter into the rest. It never says, let us work to get mighty faith. It says our work is to, to enter into rest. And so when we receive that word and we respond, whew, now we rest. That's what we're trying to do, is to enter into that rest through faith. And what Paul says here in Hebrews chapter 4 is don't, don't be like the Israelites in the wilderness who fell because they were in unbelief, because they never put the, the revelation of the word with faith. And so, you know, they, they didn't receive it, and so they couldn't enter into his rest. They tried to 
to work it up and even do their own thing in his name. So in this section where we're talking about the rhema, the logos, the grace, the faith, just to kind of summarize this far, in the first uh, part I talked about uh, legalism and, and false religion and um, how, how we make this list. It's like, I'm going to impress God. I'm going to work to get my way to God. And then secondly, when we talked about how grace really is a revelation of the Father, how Noah did, didn't just decide to build a boat, he received a revelation to do it. And then I've broken it down a little bit more in this third session, talking about how, how that uh, there is a rhema and a logos. And you and I who know the Lord, we walk with the logos all the time, but we need to live for the rhema. We need to live for the revelation of his will, the revelation of his grace. And we do that by communing with him. It's just walking with him. It's not an effort. I, I, I talk to him conversationally. Thank you, Father, for, you know, for the, the good morning. Thank you for the sunshine. Um, my son, Chris, again, four years old mentally, loves trains. <laughs> and I tip, and he's, he was at home for the first 24 years of his life, but the last 10 years he's, or so he's lived in a group home. And so he's at home about once a, once a week for a couple nights. And... Um, and I'll never forget the one time we were sitting there uh, by the railroad tracks. I stopped by and got him some breakfast, and he was going to be on the way home, and we stopped. And a train comes along. And I just went inwardly. I went, thank you, Father, that you arranged this train to come at the time that Chris and I are here having breakfast, it's just sitting in the truck. And, and Chris, he's got a bite of food, and he goes, yep, the Lord just loves trains. And he went back to <laughs> eating his, his breakfast. You know, it's that kind of a thing where we just walk with him and then you start seeing that grace upon grace because out of that comes revelation. So, Father, I ask right now that those who've been struggling to enter into rest will know that, that they will go back to that first word of rest and they will enter in there and they will be at peace. I ask that you give them revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of you. And Father, whatever that issue is, give them peace now so they can enter into the rest, realizing that their faith is the automatic response to that grace. Thank you for doing it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.